What's up, Cowboy Nation, Cowboy Headquarters, and America's team? It's your guy, G, the number one Cowboy fan, Hampton, coming to you live, direct, and correct with some Mo News. That's right, I said Mo News, M-O News that you can use. Now, let me say this here, guys, and welcome. Well, let me say this here first. Welcome to the Cowboy Huddle, where we come together and talk Cowboy talk. Give it up. But also, with that being said, this is a YouTube channel that where we come together and we talk barbershop talk. We're unapologetic about anything that we say about our Cowboys because we are diehard Cowboy fans. It's nothing scripted. It's nothing restricted. Anything to that nature. What we do, we talk about our Dallas Cowboys. Again, so welcome to the Cowboys Huddle. Yeah, 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 yeah. I hope everybody's doing well on this weekend. It's Saturday morning. Again, the another cold front has come through Texas. It was 67 degrees a couple of days before, and now it's 25 degrees. You can't make this stuff up. This is what it is. So, yeah, um, here we are again talking about next season. Not talking about the game on tomorrow because we're not playing tomorrow. But let me make this quick uh uh, make this quick statement of facts. If C.J. Stroud for the Houston Texans wins tomorrow, he's already surpassed Dak Prescott as winning playoff games. What? <laughs> you know, that was old rope and dope I gave y'all rope and dope on that one. Yeah, I had to do that right there. It's true, though. If C.J. Stroud wins, would they play today? Yeah, they play tonight. Is it tonight? Well, they play this weekend. I'm just saying they play this weekend. I can't remember when they play. But if C.J. Stroud, I think they play tonight, today. If they so happen to win today, he already surpassed Dak Prescott in playoff wins. What? Yeah, just thought I'd throw it through the lip. So. Fun fact. <laughs> That's what we call it. Fun fact. Out there to you guys. So, yeah, here we are talking about next season and where we go from here and what we do from here. We got some things going on. But as you notice, I did title this, We Are Still America's Team. Give it up. And I'm still rocking my Dallas Cowboy attire. And I'm rocking the one and only Zeke who, because I am a Zeke fan. Regardless of what people think, I am a Zeke fan. And I continue to say if we had him, it would have been a different story. We're going to talk about that as well. Um, but with that being said, I also want to talk about why we're still America's team. It's simply because we're still in the news. Every sport uh, every sports channel, every sports broadcasting channel is still talking about the Dallas Cowboys. So, yes, we're still America's team. <laughs> Regardless where, what it looks like and where we are with our football team, season over with, but we see, we still seem to make the news. So, yeah, so say what you want, say what you may. We're still the Cowboys. We're still America's team, so it is. Every time you turn on the TV, they're talking about what the Cowboys are going to do, what Dan Quinn is going to do, what Mike, my, what, what, uh, Mike McCarthy is going to do, what Jerry Jones is doing, what C.D. Lambs. It's a lot of stuff that's going on. It's like a soap opera, and that's, that's what happens when everybody tunes in to the number one America's channel or t team or whatever you want to call it but that's where we are so let me get into this oh my gosh let's see if i can pull this up i want to see if i can pull this up anyway i'm not going to pull it up but i do want to talk about michael parson michael parson why don't you just give up football and come become a content creator i don't know if you heard the latest on michael parson michael parson has a rant out there to Skip Bayless for his uh, opinion about the Cowboys. Now, 
As a football player, one has to understand that there is going to be a lot of criticism, especially when you're not holding up your end of the bargain for the fans and for the content creators and the sports channels and the sports broadcasters. There's always Stephen A. Smith is famous right now. Because of the Dallas Cowboys. <laughs> if Stephen A. Smith had nothing to say about the Dallas Cowboys, I don't know. I don't know if he would be as famous as he is now. But Stephen A. Smith knows that this is a great uh, story. This is great content for his, his pl uh, publicity, for his channel, and things like that. So I don't blame him. But Michael Parson, number one, you have this podcast and you've been voicing your opinion about things throughout the season. You have been voicing your opinion about other players, commentators. You've been voicing your opinion about your team. But Again, this shows you the lack of accountability in this organization because no one has went up to Michael Parson and say, and told him to get off of the podcast. Stop with the shenanigans. Let the content creators like myself and others out there do the reporting. Give their opinion. Now, if you want to be opinionated, you, you be opinionated with your other co-workers or your other players co-players that's on your team but for you to voice your opinion like you did against skip bayless bro i'm gonna say that was pretty pretty low pretty low and i understand you're angry for where you are right now but you are in the spotlight i told my son the same thing be careful what you do in public be careful what you say in public because people are watching and people are listening. Now, we in a new day and era today to where there's cameras and there's microphones everywhere you go. So there's no nook and cranny that you can hide from a camera or a microphone. But when you decide to create a platform to voice your opinion, you're taking on the responsibility of what you say and what you do. And from in front of a public audience and Michael Parson, the way you belittle Skip Bayless. And no, I don't always agree with Skip Bayless. There's a whole bunch of content creators or uh, uh, sports broadcasters out there that I don't agree with. But we have to remember it's their opinion. It's their opinion how they feel about a certain person, place or thing. But from you, Michael Parson, to blast Skip Bayless and call him all the names that you called him is very, very, in my opinion. Now, you might come after me. It's fine. But this is what I do. You know, this is a passion I do talk, report on my Cowboys. But it's very classless and it's very disrespectful for the words that you use against Skip Bayless. Again. Skip Bayless is not the most liked person, but he is a fan of the Cowboys, and he's been there since Don Murdoch, Roger Staubach, Troy Aikman, Tony Romo, and da See, Michael, you don't remember those days. See, we're cut from a whole different cloth than you're cut from, son. We've been here a long time, and we know what the star represents. We know the, we know what comes along with being a part of America's team. So, yeah, our expectations are a lot different. And that they're more, our, our expectation or is more, uh, how, what's the word I want to use? We, we, we hold the team and the players more accountable. So, I get it. I know where Skip Bayless is going. 
And I understand what he's talking about. And I agree with a lot of things he said and I, some things I don't. But anyway, but Michael Parson, for you, and I'm not going to repeat what you say. If you want to know what Michael Parson, you have to go on Twitter and you go pull it up and you'll see for yourself. But Michael Parson, this is something that I don't agree with. And again, somebody in the organization needs to tell Michael Parson. And I'm sure this is something that was shared with him. Every rookie, when they come into the league, they go through a class called Rookie Symposium. And that Rookie Symposium class is to tell all rookies and to notify and make them aware of the things you should and shouldn't do. And I'm sure one of those topics was about social media and the platform and the and the accountability that comes with being on social media. So, again, this is part of the problem that we have with the Dallas Cowboys is no one is held accountable for their actions. No one is held accountable for their actions to where we are today at home like we are. There is not the Jimmy Johnson era where you get up in their face and the asthma feel over here. Or the Tom Landry with the st- with the stern face to give you the look and the 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 uh, what do you call it the uh, no nonsense uh, platform. So again, Mike McCarthy, we got to see what what where you going with what what you got going on. We're going to get into that in just a minute. But Michael Parson, you got to do better, brother. Now I want to talk about this also. And I want—I was one that actually kind of was looking into this and saying maybe this is the idea. Maybe we need to look into this. Maybe it needs to happen. But phew. So I know a lot of us are talking about trading Dak. Trade Dak. Get a get 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 trade Dak and get you a, a, a quarterback in the draft. Get you Caleb Williams. Go out there and get you. Somebody that's that's relevant, that's coming out in the first round, man. We just trade Dak and, and get us a new quarterback and, and coach him up. And, and who cares if we have to start on, but let's get this new quarterback. Now, after doing research, and there are some teams out there. You know, you got your Washington, Washington Commanders. You got Denver. You got, uh, you got um, um, uh, the Patriots. You got Atlanta. All these guys got first round draft pick in the top 10 so what we're saying is let's reach out to Washington let's reach out to Denver let's reach out to Atlanta hey Atlanta listen we weren't able to to get Dak to the Super Bowl maybe we're we're lacking in some areas but so maybe y'all can you know take Dak man and we'll just take your your number eight pick in the first round. And, you know, maybe y'all can, you know, maybe Dak can help y'all because we can't help Dak. So what do you say? They say no. We call Denver. Hey, Denver, listen, man, we got Dak and we we failed Dak. So listen, man, we, we would love to talk to you about a trade for your, your first round. They say no. Washington says no. And we, <laughs> you want to know why they say no? Because what team in their right mind will give up their number two pick to get a rookie quarterback at the draft to take an eight-season veteran quarterback? I'm just saying, this is something Mike Fisher shared, and it, it made a lot of sense. We're talking about trading Dak. For a first round draft pick, when there's a plethora, I like saying it, plethora of quarterbacks out there to be had in the draft. And who's going to take that tag? Who's going to take the tag of Dak? I'm, I'm going to take on a, at least a $40 million, I'm going to say, yeah, $40 million contract when I can go get a quarterback in the draft. For about five million. What? <laughs> See, sometimes when we're not thinking, 
we want to just, you know, especially when it comes to our capital, because I am guilty of it. I was foaming. I was livid. I was angry. I want to choke somebody. I want to punch somebody. But, you know, now this is why Jerry Jones is kind of like, well, hold on, pump your brakes. Let's think about this before we make any drastic moves. But, again, who in their right mind that has the, the, the uh, opportunity to get a first-round draft pick quarterback Trade it to the Dallas Cowboys and take on at least a forty million dollar contract. I'm just saying. So let's forget about it. And if we want to talk about trade, this is something that we have to think about because you still have Trey Lance. What do we do with Trey Lance? Are we going to dangle the bait? to see if we can trade him to get something for him? And what are you going to get for him? Or do you just keep him? But what I can say when we're talking about a $59 million contract and the question is to extend or not to extend with Dak Prescott, this leads me to believe that we need a true general manager. You know, we are in this position right now because of our general manager. Our general manager has really been reckless when it comes to contracts. And we can go all the way back to Zeke. We can go all the way back to, and we can even talk about Terrence Steele. We can talk about Michael Gallup. The decisions we have made as far as contracts and our players has been recklessly uh, noticed. We waited too late to sign uh, Zeke to his second contract to where we had to give him $90 million to where we still owe him money. We waited too late to sign Dak to where we gave him over, what was that? I don't know. I can't remember. We gave him a big contract. What was his contract? 142, some 100 and some, 100 and some million because we waited too late. Because each year you wait, the market goes up. We decided to give Michael Gallup a five-year contract, I believe. Don't quote me on that. But we gave him a lump sum uh, for a contract. After an ACL tear, which I'm not sure if it's the offense fault or if it's Michael Gallup fault, who wasn't productive. We franchised a running back that barely got a thousand yards this year. And now we got to decide if we're going to keep this running back or we're going to release the running back. Uh, yeah. So this is how reckless we have been. Then we could talk about Terrence Steele that continues to play average. Zach Martin, we gave him another contract. But this is the prime example of being careless, being reckless with money. And I'm sure we all know who the who the uh, general manager is. And if you didn't know, it's Jerry Jones. What? Yeah. So until we get a true general manager that actually is going that's actually going to sit down and do the numbers and put thought with the process of signing a contract, we can continue to see a lot of misuse in money. And we say that to say, what are we going to do with that? As Cowboy fans, we're looking and we're listening. Where are we going to go with that? Are we going to extend that or are we going to let Dak play for the 59 million? You see, where we are, 
And big shout out to Todd France. Todd France is, is Dak Prescott's um, uh, agent. And he wheeled and deal, and he got the leg up on Jerry Jones. So Jerry Jones is in a situation today where he's going to have to figure out what it is that he's going to do with Dak. $59 million right now, you're not going to be able to sign too many folks if he plays. You extend him, you bring down the, the cost, you bring out the tag, bring down the tag to where you can sign. We got a lot of uh, free agents that we'd have to think about. On the defensive side, we got Dorrance Armstrong. Uh, we have J. Ron Curse, Stephon Gilmore. We have Jordan Lewis. We have Jonathan Hankins, Neville Gallimore, Gallimore. Offensive side, I think we got, um, who was that I said we had over there? Tyler Beatis. Uh, who else uh, on the offensive side? I can't remember. But, yeah, we have some serious decisions that has to be made. If you don't extend that, good luck trying to sign anyone. If you extend Dak for the next four years, paying him $60 million per year, yeah, you might can sign somebody. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah, we're in a pickle. And the question again, to extend or not to extend? That's the question. Oh, that fell right down there. Whoa. <laughs> so, this is where we are, people. This is why we're in the news, because everybody wants to know what in the hell is the Cowboys going to do with that? And then you got a head coach coming on, talking about Mike McCarthy, talking about we have a championship team. We're just not a world champion team. And I know how to win. You mean to tell me Jerry Jones bought, bought that? Jerry Jones bought that. <laughs> we have a championship team, but we can't win a championship. We're just not a world champion team yet. And I know how to win. Stop it. Just stop it. But Jerry bought it. Now, what is that going to consist of? The only thing I can say right now, what that consists of, is that he's going to get a more innovative offensive coordinator that plays something like, it's not even playing something like Kyle Shanahan and Matt LaFleur or um, Sean McVay. It's just that when we talk about those three coaches, they all come from the same coaching tree. But when we talk about that, it's just that Dan Quinn and his inability to stop that type of offense. And that is a question. While he gets ready, prepared to uh, interview with other, other teams, we don't know what's going to happen there, but. There's a lot of questions that need to be answered. Do we bring in another offensive coordinator? Do we bring in a defensive coordinator, a more innovative co defensive coordinator? What do we do? We don't know. But with that being said, guys, I'm glad that I had the opportunity. And I've been on here whew, a long time today. so, But I'm glad I had something to report to you guys. But let me say this here, man. I I want to say thank you to all the subscribers and all those that follow this channel. And again, let me say this. I started this channel because of the passion that I have for my Cowboys. And I have met, and like I say, when I started this channel, it started off slow. It wasn't, you know, a lot going on, but I was able to share my opinions, my ideas of my thoughts about our Dallas Cowboys because I've been around since the 70s following the Cowboys. I, I'm born, born uh, to bleed.
blue and silver. That's just it. But along this journey, the channel has grown. And I have actually had an opportunity to meet some great people uh, from the training camps, from the events, from the games, from the tailgates, from all different platforms. And one thing about the Cowboy Huddle, the Cowboy Huddle is going to always be the Cowboy Huddle. And this, let me say this, this is a channel where we allow others to come on and voice their opinions, to voice their ideas, their thoughts about the Dallas Cowboys. That's why we call it the Cowboy Huddle. And I met some great individuals that came on here and, and, and continues to come on here. But this is what the platform is about, to bring individuals in, to, to collaborate with others, and, you know, and maybe, you know, use it as a platform to start, you know, their platform. But one thing about it, I appreciate everybody that comes on here. And I know you guys see some new faces and that's you're going to see new faces because that's what we do. But I appreciate everybody that comes on here, man, because you are diehard fans and we're going to continue to be diehard fans. We're going to continue to talk about our Cowboys. We're going to continue to support them. We're going to talk about it. We can talk about it, but no one else can talk about it. So, again, thank you to all the subscribers, all those that follow us, all the other groups that's out there, all the new groups out there, and all the groups that are developing. One thing about the Cowboy Huddle, you are welcome to come on this channel and share your thoughts, share your ideas about our Dallas Cowboys. This is what this platform was made for. So again, thank you to everybody that has been a part of this, man. It, it means a lot to me. And I just hope and pray that we continue to bring good content for you guys. And like I said, a lot of this stuff from here on out might be breaking news. But again, we are fanatics about our Dallas Cowboys. And like I always say, don't nothing come to a sleeper but a dream. So let's make it happen. Dallas Cowboys. Deuces.